One of the things that really impressed me is watching the Koro video with the guy in the back with the big baseball bat thing and just hitting the drum. So when I started to play Taiko, I'm like, that's what I want to do. I want to stay in the back and whack the big drum. And so we always thought about making a really big one. First of all, uh, we didn't have any uh, taiko, and we are uh, asking that like a Buddhist church or a cultural center. Not only were we making up the music, we were also making the instruments. Well, we needed more drums, so I looked in the catalog, and it was out of question. It was a thousand dollars then. What I saw in, in junior high school and high school going to manual arts and crochet that people were making their own conga drums. We just went around to hardware stores, looked at barrel. We bought a nail keg at first, this really soft pine wood barrel with nails in it. So we, we, the guys thought we were crazy. We said, we want the barrel, we don't want the nails. <laughs> I kind of make jokes about it, but it has to do with this kind of Yankee ingenuity. Taiko, ne, tezukuri de tsukuru tte koto jitai ga ne, surprise datta desu ne. Bikkuri shimashita. Ah, koto dekiru no kana to. Sore de boku tachi mo kono takai taiko o kaanakute mo, an jibun tachi mo kono wine no taro o tsukatte tsukureru ba ii na tsuyu kan. I don't think the wine barrel taiko would have ever been invented in Japan, for example, because I think people in Japan are stuck with, well, a taiko is this. I remember being there and holding with a pair of pliers on one end and went to the other side and pulled it with a plier and said, quick! <laughs> <You know? laughs> I think we all discover very soon that this, this is, there's something wrong with this way. It's not a very effective way of doing things. But that's the way we started making our drums. It was like lopsided and you know, whatever. It wasn't very tight, but, and it was a lot of work to do it that way. You know, I talk to uh, Kinara people very primitive way to make a, a skin, poor skin. So I told them, use the kajak. Back up in LA at the Senshing Temple, it was time for me to attend Taiko Drum Making 101, as Johnny showed me how he makes the drums, using a barrel and thick cowhide and some muscle. Boy, that thing is stretched out. You sure this thing isn't gonna? No, it won't pop. Every time we do this, Kajak was, wasn't strong enough. We broke many, many. Realizing that you have zero, <laughs> that we have to be as creative as possible. And, and we knew at the very get-go that that was not wrong. Uh, we may have questioned, is this authentic? And we knew that we could never be authentic, uh, given that we would never have the authentic materials. And then we were using chairs, propping up on chairs. And then we were using these tripods, kind of like Boy Scout made tripods. And then we would just have these bare barrels, right, with these straps around the outside. And just being able to hear from other taiko makers what they were finding and inventing. Oh, let's try that, let's try that. And so it was always um, evolving. It was all real crude. Um, we worked with what we had. We acquired one big oak barrel. And Mark, since he lived on the farm, was able to get a fresh cowhide. And he defatted it, dehaired it, and treated it out on the farm. Well, every group in the country at that time were 
making their own drums. And it was it was it was nice at that time because everybody was sharing information about how how to make drums. And so I cut these into smaller pieces, and then I finger joint um, pieces together so I get a thicker stave. Mark Miyoshi. He took taiko making to a totally different level. He got really involved in it, went to Japan and he studied. In Japan, you know, what they do is that they cut out, they'll cut out a, a, a round from the middle and then they use that for a smaller drum. Make a drum like this size, so you need a tree that's maybe 30, maybe 30 inches in diameter. That's a big tree, you know, that's, a, that's an old tree. So if you're making it out of stage, you don't, you don't need as big a trees. But when I make my drums, I try to, um, well, I put myself into them, you know, and, and, and that's who I am. And so my belief is this minimum spiritual way. So the way, say, Buddhists think about the drum is, is really no different than what Native Americans think. You know, there's a whole universe inside this drum. And this drum is made of, you know, the skin of an animal, you know, the four-legged ones, and the tacks are from the earth. The wood is standing ones, and the whole world, you know, goes into this drum, and the, like a new drum, a new spirit is born, you know, when, the, when, when that last um, head is tacked on or put onto a drum and is played, you know, for the first time. Every drum to me has a spirit. And the first and last rule is to put your energy into the drum, receive the energy. Put your spirit into the drum, receive the spirit from the drum. So that flow has to be happening, that connection has to be happening. We learn that the only way to draw the spirit out is, is to play it with proper technique and proper attitude. And so I, I, I understood that on the surface level, but as soon as I learned the process of what it takes to actually skin the hide um, and tack it to the drum, it became a different thing. I really um, feel like each drum has its own personality. They all have their unique sound. They all are individual, and I view them almost like people. A lot of people don't understand what struggles we went through and I think it's really important because it's really easy for the kids to take advantage and take for granted the equipment that we have and, and they don't realize in their first okay. years we made all our own drums. What I think is great about the groups um, in the United States and North America is that everything is done from scratch which is really getting back to the basics. So then I started talking to different people that were making taiko at the time and uh, started using my techniques plus their, uh, their techniques and ended up making taikos. The majority of groups here in this country, they make their own drums and I, I, I think that's really great, you know, drum making has become like a folk art here. We don't make everything traditional, we make American way. 
So if that's will make people in Japan happier, I think that's better. <laughs> there was a, a Japanese taiko player who knew that we had made our drums in the past and asked, do you have any instructions as to how to make a drum? And I said, well, they're very, very old, you know. Yeah, I'll send it to you. And so the year after we saw him, he said, I made it. Yes. And he felt so proud. So it was kind of really great to see this full circle, Japanese taiko coming to the U.S. and then like our tweaking going back here and seeing it introduced back to Japan was like, whew.